All right, YouTube, what is going on? My name is Bigfoot. Thank you very much for checking out this video. In today's episode of City Skylines for El County, we have the Industries DLC now, which is great. So this means that we can go ahead and start with a lot of new projects, which I'm really excited about. And I think that we are going to have a lot to do because there's so much content in this DLC. With this map, we can do a lot of it. We can't do all of it. We do not have ore industry, for example, or we don't have any ore plots on with this map. However, it should give us a good run for our money, especially with oil and forestry. So, really good to see that everyone has been enjoying the first three episodes so far. I'm very happy about it indeed. I am going ahead and continually looking to improve this series as we go. So, it really is feedback driven. I've gone ahead and incorporated a lot of feedback in so far over the last two episodes. And then going forward, I want to continue to do the same. People are still requesting me I add this mod, I add that mod. I will go ahead and probably shortly start to add in some mods, to be honest. I want to get that mod again which hides uh, pollution because this looks hideous over here. I don't mind, for example, the trees being a bit dead. That's understandable and that's realistic. But I don't like the purple on the ground. It just looks disgusting. But we're not here to talk about that for now. Let's go ahead and actually review and see what we've got in here. Now, I want to put a big disclaimer on this. I am not an expert, if we've not already gathered that. I'm also not really, this is the first time me playing with the DLC, so if I am a bit slow or get things a little bit wrong, I do apologise. If you want an expert City Skyline series, then go ahead and watch Conflict Nerd or Strict Toaster, because I am not your person, unfortunately. I may be one day, but it's, I need to put a lot more hours into this game, considering I've only probably put in about 100 hours into City Skylines, which, compared to some other games, like Transport Fever, that's nearly at 500 hours. It's quite a large difference, if you understand what I'm saying. Anyway, this is really, really interesting here, actually. So we're now a small city, which is great. However, we do have a hydro power plant, which could be super useful in the valley, because we do have the, I guess, rivers flowed down from heights. So I think a dam could actually really work on this map quite well, in matter of fact. Depends how fast the current is in the water, so we'll have to go ahead and see the currents, but... The thing is, we need to go ahead and unlock a lot more tiles and move away from this central area, which I think we'll do today. And then we've also got cargo, train terminal, and train station, which is super awesome as well. So that means we can start to move stuff by cargo. Anyway, so continuing on here, as we can see, we've got our garbage facilities in this menu now. Then along with that, we've got forestry, we've got farming, we've got ore, we've got oil, we've got warehouses, and then we've also got unique factories. So, what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start off by building warehouses. So, I'm just a bit curious because, again, I've not actually seen a lot of this DLC either. I watched Dylan do a forest video and that was about it, to be honest. So, I do feel that I'm a bit inexperienced, if you will. So, this here is a fence yard for stoning goods and products. A warehouse has three different operation modes. Fill, empty and balanced. On balance mode, the warehouse will operate based on the current demands. The operating mode can be adjusted from the building's info panel. Right, okay, I'm quite curious at that. So that's a warehouse yard, and then I think we just scale up from there, assuming they all do the same, which it pretty much looks like they do. So we're going to start off with a small one instead here, actually. And I really just want to go ahead and see what this has got to offer. So as we can see here right now, I think we store up the resources we harvest and then we either sell them or we go ahead and... Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. So it reminds me sort of of the uh, SimCity sort of idea in the latest SimCity from 2013. That game had a really good marketing system where you went ahead and traded with either other cities or the outside worlds and that was really, really good. But you had to have like cargo depots, warehouse sort of things, which you would have to use to go ahead and trade with outside places. One thing I'm noticing very quickly is that somehow both of my landfills are full yet again, even though I do have two of these incineration plants on the go. So what I'm going to have to do is probably add in another landfill for the time being. I'll just add two in for the sake of it right now, because my garbage processing status is horrible. So... Let's just go ahead and throw quite a bit of money at that for the time being and then hope things get a little bit better as time goes on. Though I will deal with that properly at a later stage. 
So what I probably want to do here is we've actually got a lot of demand for industry as well, which really works out quite nicely. Interestingly, is there new offices in this? I thought there was new offices or new office types. That might actually come under unique buildings. But what I want to do is I want to start off with forestry. So if we go ahead and come out of here and we look on our resources map, as we can see here, we've got a lot of forests around us, which is perfect for going ahead and harvesting trees, which is good. If we go ahead and go out to more aerial view and then put this on, you can see this a bit better. Wish I could get rid of that. So we've got a lot of forests which we can go ahead and harvest, which is good. Then with regards to farming, we don't really have any fertile land, I don't think, at all on this map, which is a real shame, so we're going to miss out on that. Then we've got some ore. We don't have any ore either, in that matter of fact, which is a shame. We do have a lot of oil, though, though arguably it is in really difficult places. It's pretty much all on the top of mountains, so that will give us a real logistical challenge as well to face when we're going to go ahead and try to abstract that oil, but it's all part of the adventure. I do know with this map, though, it is mainly going to be forestry we're going to be running. So what I'm thinking here is we've got a nice large valley over here, which I'd quite like to move into. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and come back to tile view, and we're going to go ahead and buy this tile here. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and start to maybe harvest some of this stuff. So what I want to do is we're going to go ahead and extend the road. We're going to go ahead and build a wonderful bridge and see how well this goes. I'm not hopeful, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So if we build to there, for example, then if I do to here, now it's not M, it's page up in this game, if I'm right in saying. I don't know how far I need to go up, though that's the real question. Obviously higher than I currently am. Right, I'm going to restart this because I'm not doing this very good, am I? Right, let's go ahead and reload that there. I think what we'll actually do as well is we'll do just the dual carriageway over here. So if we have this that long and do up once, up twice, go for something like that. That bridge is over and then about, I think it's about that distance. Again, I should probably get the mods where I measure actually the distance of the roads I'm drawing in. Then that works out nicely and it looks relatively symmetrical actually which is quite surprising anyway so we're gonna have a road which continues all the way over to here which is nice so basically how this works is that you go ahead and you have a district which you go ahead and define so we're gonna define this as an industry district here as a forested area then what we do is actually specify it being a forested area and then what we do is you like build a sort of like office area and with this district and then from that or you just build an office in this district and then that defines it and then from there you start to go ahead and harvest the resources from my understanding so from that we've managed to go ahead and get ourselves a industrial estate which is good so if we now go jump into this and as we can see here we have got ourselves this is a forestry main building so it sets an unassigned industry areas type to forest industry and allows its level progression it also works as the industry areas headquarters as i said for city services and vehicles so it's very important that we actually keep this on this main road as well which is quite important so that's good to see i want to get rid of this here but there's no x button which is really frustrating so as we can see here, we have managed to unlock level 1, so we now have a sawmill, we have a small tree plantation, and we have a small log yard. So maybe I actually don't have to build this in a forested area, coming to think about it. But oh well. Anyway, so that means we've got some more unlocks, which is good, as we can see through this menu down here. So what I'm probably wanting to do is I'm probably wanting to have the small log yard i think on the main road because i think that'd be quite logical we're gonna need to worry about power and water along here but we'll do that shortly then with that done we're probably going to also require a sawmill i imagine then we're going to need to go ahead and get some of these forested areas now what i want to do is not place this on the main road at all so we're going to go ahead and have another road which sort of comes up here like so and then we'll see what we can do from here. That's what I want to do. So we jump back into here. And then what I want to do is see if we can go ahead and get maybe a few of these along here. Like so. Right, okay. So that's a start anyway. 
So I'm not really at all sure if this will work or what is going to happen. First of all, we do need to connect up though with the natural, or not natural resources, the, what are these called? These are called the utilities, that's a good word for them. Right, so what we can do is I think we're just going to stick a windmill at the top here. Instead of having a power line just traips in the whole length of the map. I'd rather not have that. And let's go ahead and connect that up to there, which is fine. So that should power here. Then with regards to water, I think we'll actually go ahead and... We're going to have to pipe water in, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Right, okay, so where's our nearest connection from here? That'll just run along to there. And I suppose the forested area will really need water to make sure that the trees continue to grow. Because that'll be very important indeed. So... How are we doing here? It says you're operating normally. We've got 29 workers over here, which is good. So now what happens? That is the real question. So looking in here, the info, acquisition, we've got four tons. I'm assuming that's referring to the four lots there. So right now we're importing none. So right now it looks like we are going ahead and taking the raw forest products I'm guessing that four tons actually doesn't link back to that. Then that's going ahead and that is going to go ahead and give us, it looks like, raw output and then planned timber through the sawmill, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's how it works. And right now we're in the negative. So it looks like here the produce resource units until next level. So it looks like we're already moving wood. We must be doing that. Though I don't really understand how. Do we need, like, service vehicles or anything like that to move stuff around? Balanced. So you've got storage mode of balanced. Raw forest products. I'm assuming the stuff in the forest will come from here and it will come around the corner, round into here. Or possibly visit here, actually. So not enough raw materials, which that makes sense. So there is freight trucks there. Okay, so now this is where I'm confused. If we go ahead and we've got main buildings, aha, this is what I wanted to see. Perfect. So, if we pause you here, as we can see, so forestry truck, owner, small tree plantation, delivering small logs, or we're delivering forestry products to the small log yard, which is perfect. So, if we continue to follow this, then... Yeah, okay, I see a problem in this road network already. That is for sure. We need to go ahead and have a junction like here. So we don't have the trucks going all the way along there just to turn. So you should hopefully do a U-turn. Need to turn off light seed as well. Oh, you're going to go up here to do a U-turn. we? Right, yeah, I've not made this very efficiently, I have realized. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to make a, a turning circle in here. So you go across there and then you should... Nah, <laughs> Not go that way. You should go straight over. I swear these trucks have got a mind of their own right now. Yes, yeah, so you're pulling into there, which is good. So you've dropped off your load, which is perfect. So, now as you can see, the storage is 8 tons out of 300, which is good. So, can we now pass the stuff over to here, or does it automatically pass over to here? I'm unsure about this. Own product, 16 tons. So I'm assuming we should start to get stuff come through here shortly. I mean, we are starting to drop off raw materials here. Balance, fill, and empty. I mean, the good thing is we're getting a lot of wood from the forest, which I'm quite happy about. As we can see, the trucks just sort of turn into the trees and disappear, which is good. And we've also got a, what looked like a, a digger or an excavator or a JCB or something along those lines. Looks like someone's maybe turning up for... Oh, it's actually... Well-educated young adult, and you're a worker. Yeah, that makes sense. Right, okay, so we are getting some good movement here. We've got the bin lorry coming along, which is even better. Right, okay, so you have got some storage, but you still seem to be doing nothing. Which is problematic. I feel I should do something, but I don't think I can really do something. Improve logistics? Packing and scheduling of deliveries is more efficient due to advanced inventory and vehicle tracking system. Increase the storage capacity 
by 20%. We definitely don't need that right now because we're not... Aha, now see, a truck just went into there. And now all of a sudden you're operating normally. That warning's disappeared. So I'm guessing what happens is maybe trucks drop off wood here. And then some of them come around and take the, like, planks, I'm assuming, or just the logs from here around to here. And then from there, not really at all sure what's going to happen here. So if we go ahead and actually jump back into info, as we can see, we're actually importing some, which is not great. It's got a lot of workers. I never realized that. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to quickly disappear and check out how this actually works because I'm probably just being really stupid and you're all probably shouting at the screen and going, oh, why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing that? Yeah, I know. I'm probably missing something really obvious. I'll be back in just two seconds. Okay, so fast forward about five minutes and I think I now understand the process, which is exciting. So coming back to this graph here, as we can see, we're basically now going ahead and getting all of our own production, basically just the raw harvested logs from here. This is now going into the pipeline and what's happening is because we've got a sawmill, it's giving us plans or it's not planned planes. I don't even know what that word is, but it's basically giving us planks is really what it is giving us, which is good. So that then comes to here, and then after this, once the output has been achieved, then what happens is that it moves along to our warehouse, and this is where we make money from. So as we can see right now, there's not a lot of storage going on in here, but trucks will come around here every so often and basically just go ahead and take away the product from here, and then it will then go on to either other businesses in with my city, or then it will leave the city. I can also go ahead and add in quite a lot of different other ways to go ahead and get stuff out the city. For example, add in a cargo hub on the train network or add in a cargo airport. That would work similarly as well, which is exciting. On top of that as well, if we look at... Where are we? If we look at... If we jump back to forests here and we actually look, pay like close attention to this... So as we can see here, we're extracting buildings, so we're just going ahead and basically getting ourselves the raw logs. Then what we're doing is you can go ahead and either make it into paper or actual planks, which is what we're doing here. Then after that, you can make unique factories, which I want to talk about next. Then that can make additional money because these are like specialized luxury products, and that turns out to make more money. So if we go ahead and look along here, as we can see, all of these special unique factories are unfortunately zoned out however a lot of them you can really tell a lot by the names so you've got sneaker factory you've got a shipyard all this sort of stuff would require some of these high-end industries or not high-end but specialized industries i guess you could say so it's very important that i go ahead and i guess really continue on the production here so then eventually we can go ahead and get some of these unique factory so we can go ahead and make a lot more money if you have played sim city it is a very similar system coming to think of it you basically want to go ahead and get lots of oil or lots of like ore so you can start producing aluminium and tvs for like the great eden project something along those lines so very much is just going ahead and harvesting resources to go ahead and basically make your city better now because i am not currently directly with any unique special factories actually using this it's automatically being sold, which is good. So if we go into our budget panel, which is here, then if we go ahead and have a look at this here, as we can see, we're actually making quite a bit of income, which is good to see. Quite a bit of profit just because we're selling quite a lot of our goods. Expenses, it's not actually costing us that much to run, which is great. So overall, it's a great success so far. As we can see here, it's relatively full here. We are going ahead and getting a relative decent amount of wood through here. However, I think we are going to jump back into policies and then we're going to add on improved logistics just so we can go ahead and... Well, what is advanced automation? Robots and other automatic, more accurate. I mean, that would be quite good as well. I mean, here we've got increased storage capacity of extractors and processing buildings by 20%. I'm assuming you can only have one of these on at once, though. I can, how does that work? That's strange. Then you've got increased upkeep cost of the building. So maybe the automation one would surely be better. 
Anyway, things are working out here quite well so far, so we'll come back to it. What I need to do for level 2 buildings is we need to go ahead and be able to get ourselves different stars in the forestry area. So right now we're a 1 star forestry area, a level 1, level 2, same thing. As we can see here we've got 1 star which is fine, so we just want to go ahead and try and increase that up to two stars. How is that done? Well, as you can see here, we just need to go ahead and wait and really just increase the production level. But, when I was reading, someone was very much saying that make sure you don't neglect your city when you go ahead and do all the building, because if you do that, then what will happen is that you'll all of a sudden have spent way too much time doing something, and then your city's just going to be just in derelict and just a mess when you get back to it. So, that's what I'm back here to do, because I don't want to spend all my time on industry, as much as I love industry right now, I don't want to spend all my time at it at this current stage. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a lot more offices to our office zone, because that is what it is here for. So let's go ahead and do that. On top of this, actually, I want to go ahead and add in just a small commercial shop out here, just because we've actually got a lot of people working out here. There's 40 people working in that building. We've got doesn't actually say here and then in this building we've got another 44 workers I'm assuming there's a fair amount of workers working in the plantations themselves so got a lot of workers out here so and I very much could see us adding in a bus route out here as well in the future if that's possible but what I want to do is I want to go ahead and build a rail yard and the reason for this is because we can go ahead and use warehouses and just connect them up better take a lot more trucks off the road if we go ahead and have a rail yard Plus, I feel my city could benefit, just the general industry could actually do it with the rail yard as well. So let's see what we can go ahead and do here. If we jump in here to trains, as we can see, we've got our typical cargo terminal here. What I'm actually thinking of doing is... I don't really know. I was half thinking about putting it in this area here. But, I'm unsure now. Because if we have it in there... Yeah, right, I'm going to try something. I don't know how well this is going to go. But we'll give it a go anyway. So if we have a road coming up the back here... Like so. I'm starting to think this isn't going to work in this tight space, but we'll give it a go anyway. So yeah, that would work fine if you were just going onto that track there, but then if you're coming from this other direction, then it's really not going to work. I mean, we could always add in a turning circle, but then does that make things a little bit messy? Quite possibly, to be honest. So let's go ahead and see what we can do anyway. So if I'm to just join that into there, again, I do need to get that mod. Uh, it's called, it's to do with accurate angles. We could really do with that. Then instead of me, like, doing round to there... Yeah, that's not going to work, for example. So what I could do is we could just have one massive turning circle across the track. I think that would be the best bet for the time being. I mean, I just want to double check if I definitely cannot do this. I mean, yeah, angle's just ridiculously sharp anyway. So what I want to do is I just want to have a junction that comes off here. Though I need to do a junction normally. Just because of this game. So let's go ahead and do a junction like that. Then if we go ahead and then grab our curve tool, let's go ahead and try and make what we can as a circle. Yeah, that's looking good. Then what we want to do is bring that back along to there like that, see? And then if we jump back into straight like that. So that's a turning circle there. So if you do want to come into this depot from... I guess, this direction here, then you can go ahead and use a turning circle, you'll go around the turning circle, and then you'll just cross over here pretty much and go straight into our cargo terminal, which is perfect. Alright, so that's the cargo terminal now into operation, which is good, with that additional water. So this is where now we should hopefully start to see some trains arrive on the map. I also actually just want to end or add in a general passenger station as well just for common use, and I think we're going to try and get that in over here. So if I jump into here, and then passenger train station will go here like so. Now what I want to do is I want to sort of leave the main line as it is, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to not do that, I'll tell you that much. Let's cut that back a little bit. 
Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. So if we do something like that to there, and then that can join on from there, and then this through this house. Oh no, that's a school, isn't it? Gonna need to move that along there a bit. Which is fine. And then if we go ahead and very quickly join that into there. And then if we just go ahead and add in our final connection like that. I need, yeah, I'm going to jump into the, I think, uh, the workshop after this. Because, wow, we, this is just such a, such a blunder now. Right, so that's our passenger service added in. Now, we are going to have to allow intercity trains for the time being. Because right now, of course, we do not have any of our own. Which is quite important. Never realised how much the train station cost, actually. So... That is going to cost us quite a lot, but at least we've got that connection now in case people want to come from in and or out of cities. And we've also got two bus stops, quite a few bus stops actually, right along in front of the train station, which is also really, really cool. How long is it going to take until we see actual any use of this happening? That'll be a big question. I'm also quite curious about the warehouse and monitoring it. So there's a goods train already arrived in, which is nice. So that's hopefully going ahead and increasing trade across our city. Got a lot of vehicles coming in here, which I totally understand. So it's getting use. And yeah, there's another few trains coming in, which is perfect. So it's in use. Still not overly happy with the location, to be honest. But I'm just trying to, I guess, fill up a corner here, which it's a good use of space. It just lands up creating this mess here at the railway line which is quite strange so that trains away so i think we can leave that for the time being hopefully that'll do our city a lot of good i'm hoping to start to see a lot more trade occurring now and us making a lot more money through that as we can see right now it looks like we've dropped in profit quite drastically on the forestry which is disappointing so we'll go ahead and go over to that in a second also by the end of this episode want to go ahead and mess around with the road tool booths as well because that is also a new thing in this game Okay, so as we can see, we've got our two very small... Yeah, we've got too many well-educated workers in our city. It's crazy. So we do have a Big Bite restaurant, which I think would be ideal for workers. And then we've also got a drugstore, which might be good for workers as well. If they get, like, sore head or they chainsaw their arm off. I mean, who knows what can happen over here. But what's the issue? So you're operating normally. You're just about full, which is quite crazy. So can be exported for money. How do we do that? So, depending on the storage mode, the warehouse will try to do one of the following. Balanced. Aim to keep storage half full, half empty. Well, you're failing at that quite miserably, it looks like right now, to be honest. Fill. So aim to keep the storage full by acquiring the resources. Aim to empty the storage by selling the resources. Right, I think we want to switch to empty for the time being. Even though we are going ahead and using timber right now. Or even though we're using the raw forest products to give ourselves a timber. But I don't think we're really making too much money at the timber. I think what we need to do is honestly just really make the whole operation. We just need to scale it up here, I think. That's what I really need to do in all honesty. Interesting, a pedant. So I can have conifers. I'd much rather have conifers because conifers really fits a lot more in with the theme. So we've got beach right now. What are all there? Yeah, they're too bright for this map. I much prefer conifer in all honesty. I think that looks quite smart as well. It ties in a lot better with the trees. It's quite a mixture of trees on this map actually, but I do like the, the look of the conifers there. It doesn't blend in naturally, but I can see this whole valley just being used as a forestry area. The thing is, in valleys like this, it's going to be difficult to get villages in anyway, for example. So that's quite important to note. All the way over here, God, we could get a nice, like, a nice few ocean villages and quite a lot of nice drives over here. I quite like that. I'd also like to attempt to go ahead and build a village which you can only access by boat. But again, I don't know. I'm pretty sure the boat capabilities aren't that great in this map. So we'll have to check that out. Anyway, this is something you have not noticed. Post services. So we've got a post office. Offers mail-related services such as acceptance and delivery of letters and parcels. Each post office maintains a small fleet of post vans that collect and distribute office or mail locally, sorry. And then we've got a sorting facility. That is so cool. What I think I want to do is then get in a post office. 
right in our city centre. I mean, it does not have much good of a sphere of influence at all, mind you. What we'll do is we'll stick this down in the corner here and see if that affects the whole city. So that's going to cover the wider Crescent Bay area. Not necessarily the village or the Crescent, but hopefully that should have some impact on the surrounding areas. We're starting to see houses being affected, but that's really cool. I never realised that was a thing. That must be new in the... Maybe not with the DLC, but maybe came as an update with it, which is really cool. Quite happy about that. Okay, so it looks like we've managed to get ourselves a level 2 wood production, which is great. So, area bonuses, we've got plus 4 efficiency and minus 10% pollution. Didn't really think about pollution with forestry, but it is actually a really big issue. Just with all the heavy vehicles and stuff like that. The following buildings have been unlocked. So we've got a biomass pellet plant, which is very specific. We've got a furniture factory, we've got a sawdust storage, we've got... Forestry Workers Barracks. I think that could be super useful. Then we've got Small Tree Sapling Field. Okay, right. What I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and very quickly mess around with some of this, I think. I would quite like to get a barracks in. I think a barracks would be super useful. So, Forestry Workers Barracks. Workers Barracks increase the work efficiency of the workers in the industry area. Each building increases the work efficiency by 5% to a maximum of 100%, so we can only have maximum 20 buildings there. Auxiliary building needs to be placed inside industrial area. That makes sense. So, this is massive, I've just realised as well. So if we have this basically at the entrance to the forestry road, then I think that works out quite well. That means now I think our diner is going to get even better coverage as well now which is super good and it does look so smart look at that it's all like really smart cabins i love the look of that i really do there's quite a few of the workers out front here as well which is awesome okay so now we are we are pretty much ready to expand this now and take this to the next level hopefully now it should be back into a bit more profit yeah it is back into a bit more profit arguably i'm now going ahead and trying to empty this place out a bit because it's really just too full. It's about to fill up to the brim, actually. So I would like to start to see this deplete, not increase. Though it sort of seems to be just going against my commands. Like, the balanced storage mode just didn't work at all. And empty's not really doing too much right now at all. I just did see a truck pull in there, actually, which is good. So yeah, I think we'll leave it on that for now. We'll let the game run at a little bit of speed. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to wrap this episode up. So I do apologise we didn't get around to a lot of new content in this game. All of a sudden we've got a lot of trains using this place, which is exciting. And they're using my turning circle, which is cool as well. I thought this would go down quite well. It will go ahead and just increase connectivity. And as we can see, we've got 100% load there as well. It looks like it's off to Verez, which I'm not really at all sure where that is. I'm assuming it's a neighbouring city, but... What we're going to do is wrap this episode up here. We've still got so much to do. We also actually need to focus on our city the next episode because even though we've gone ahead and started on forestry, we've got an extremely high demand for industry and offices right now. So I think we do need to go ahead and deal with that where we can and then also go ahead and see what we can do just in our general village as well. Go ahead and continue to expand and make operations better. How is our post office doing? I want to see its speed of influence. Let's not do that. Let's jump back into here very quickly. While I'm running this outro, go ahead and check out my description, which contains links to various places you might be interested in. Interestingly, this video of influence is not great here, but oh well. You want to go ahead and check out my Twitter and my Patreon and my Discord. All links are down in the description below. Any support you can offer on any of those networks is greatly appreciated by myself and that's all for this video ladies and gentlemen there'll be another episode in about two days time and continue to give me your thoughts your feedback on the series and we'll go ahead and try and improve it as much as we possibly can that's all for this video ladies and gentlemen so thank you very much for watching my name is bigfoots and i'm out